Hey everybody, my name is Carl Slaap and I'm a watchmaker from the Netherlands but on holiday here in Paris, France. I want to take you uh, through history of watchmaking and Paris as a city because there is the Eiffel Tower. We have over there, I'll show you a bit more, Louvre and the history of Paris, of France is very closely related to watchmaking because the Louvre, now the most, I think probably biggest uh, museum in the world, was at the time a royal palace. That is important. Here in Pont Neuf, on Pont Neuf, it's called the New Bridge, but it is actually the oldest still remaining bridge in Paris. Uh, built in 1607 um, is the link to Paris, to the mainland, on this small island, Ile de Cité. And that is where it becomes interesting. And there at the end of Pont de Cité uh, is a beautiful surprise at the end of our small walk. Ile de Cité is a small island in the middle of the Seine, the river through uh, Paris, and is the oldest inhabited place of the city. I think 300 BC, the Celtic Gaul came here, um, the Parisi, and that is tra loosely translated boatman. So this Ile de Cité has always been the heart of Paris. That is important. Well, I do have here a strategically placed <laughs> espresso and um, let's go on a small walk. I do hope you enjoy it because the history of watchmaking and the history in France are so closely related. Uh, I must say it is the history of continental Europe because in the 17th century, so the 1600s, um, there were two centers of horology and it is England, London, with uh, of course Graham, Arnold, uh, Mudge and here in Paris uh, a bit more about that later because here just over the bridge I'll put down my coffee for it but that's important it is because here we have the workshop of Abraham Louis Breguet there it is if you try to look for it uh, and if you read the old books they changed the numbering of Guy de Horloge. Uh, sorry about the pronunciation. I'm quite aware it's horrible. <laughs> but um, they changed the numbering of the buildings here. So if you look for it in the old books, uh, but I've seen old drawings and this around 39, that's the original workshop of Abraham Louis Breguet. A bit more about his history later on because it is fascinating and it is on let me show you there Key de Horloge and I must say well come walk with me while we have a coffee um, there is a bit of a strange translation in what is a watch and what is a clock especially here in, for the Netherlands. In the Netherlands we have a wristwatch, a horloge and a clock. clock. In English of course a clock and wristwatch but here in France a montre. I know there are many exceptions but roughly montre is wristwatch and horloge means clock. And here at the end of our walk, uh, the beautiful surprise, um, there is 
the original name system, giver of the name Kido Horloge. Um, the history of watchmakers here in Paris is insane. There are so many. Um, it is a bit windy out here, so I'll walk through there and then I can put them all. First things first, cup of coffee. Cheers, everybody. Oh. Not too bad. There is a huge list of watchmakers uh, that were uh, here in uh, Paris and came to Paris. And that is mostly through the building we're seeing now. Because I told you, Quai de Horloge, or Ile de Cité, sorry, the small island in the middle of the Seine, has been for centuries uh, the, the heart of the city. Now we see the Louvre over there, which was the Royal Palace. But before that, even in uh, the 14th century, this was the royal palace on Ile de Cité, on the small island. And that is why this city, uh, well, this place is geographically so important. And that is why Breguet started his watchmaking um, workshop right here. Well, the, the list of watchmakers, like, uh, for me, it all started with Julien Leroy. Uh, watchmaker of the king and that was well 1686 so 17th century but the real start of modern modern watchmaking for me is more like the 18th century and then his son uh, Pierre Loire and they were all in one generation roughly P Pierre Loire, Le Pin and Le Pote were both born in Paris uh, in 1720 and I'm quite convinced in the old books that Le Pot had his workshop here on Quai de Horloge as well um, and let me see I think there might be a chance that it's the same building that Breguet bought but I'm not too sure um, we know for sure that Breguet uh, was an apprentice to Bertou and Le Pin here in Paris. And of course, uh, Bertou and Breguet, Bertou from 1727 and Breguet from 1746. So there is one generation between Bertou and Breguet. But they were both from the region in uh, Neuchâtel. Like I said earlier, um, at the time not Switzerland, but part of Prussia uh, and Protestant, uh, more French and not Swiss at the time. But the link between Bertou and um, Breguet is very important. Bertou was a bit more uh, conservative and the innovations, this is roughly exaggerated, came from uh, Breguet. Well, like I said, that is the Louvre and that is the uh, Royal Palace. But before that, this is the Royal Palace. And even from the 14th century, really, really early on, but very interesting is how Breguet life well was a, bit, a tragic start uh, in Neuchâtel, of course. But his father uh, in 1747. But his father died when he was 13 years old in 1758. There, there was no horological link in the Breguet family, but his stepfather. So when he was 13 years old, Joseph Tate, he was the horologist. 
he got Abraham Louis Breguet interested in watchmaking. And then he came to Paris early on as a well, small boy. He was an apprentice at uh, Bertou and Lepine in 1762. So still uh, unexperienced, starting out as a watchmaker. And he started his workshop, we just passed, I showed you, in 1775, Guido Horloge. And that same year, he got married here in Paris with um, uh, Cécile, of course. Tragic part. Uh, his son was born in 1776, but his wife dies in 1780. So the son was only four years old. And his sister-in-law, so the sister of Cecile, called Suzanne, take o took over the, uh, the raising of their son. All happened here. Well, again, this used to be the royal palace before the Louvre, but then, the French Revolution and that was well, quite horrible 1789 and then everything changed this became the palace of justice and one step back in the history of Brege Brege was an amazing watchmaker and made watches for <laughs> all royal Europe continent way over the world he got in the commission for making the most complicated watch ever made in 1783 just because before the revolution from Alex from Versum, um, a Swedish uh, military man for uh, Marie Antoinette because he was, uh, well, in a relation <laughs> with Marie Antoinette. So Breguet started in the workshop we just passed in making the most complicated watch ever. It's Breguet. 160 if you uh, um, enjoyed it please have a look because it is called the Marie Antoinette but she never saw it and the amazing thing we just did a small walk remember we passed Breguet's uh, workshop here the old royal palace became the palace of justice and here in this building behind me Marie Antoinette was a prisoner so while Breguet was working on the watch in his workshop, just a few hundred meters we passed, Marie Antoinette was a prisoner here in the Palace of Justice, uh, was convicted, went under, underneath the guillotine, and that was the end of it. So Marie Antoinette never seen her watch commissioned by her lover. It was completed in 1802. Well, Marie Antoinette was... Uh, uh, beheaded by them. Try not to get myself killed crossing the road. Well, here we are at Kido Horloge. There. Like I said, in France, Horloge is usually, there are exceptions, uh, a clock instead of a wristwatch. And just around the corner here is the reason why it was called Kido Horloge. Look at this. I think it's stunning. That is the medieval clock from the 14th century, so centuries before uh, the horology here in Paris, Breguet, Leroy, everybody. This is the clock on the original royal palace. That is the namesake of the name giver of Kilo Horloge here on Ile. Uh, Ile de Cité here in Paris. 
I really do hope you enjoyed uh, this small walk, just a few hundred meters, but the amount of history is here is amazing. I do hope you uh, enjoy our YouTube channel, Chronoglide, watchmaking YouTube uh, channel. And uh, please leave your comments. We read them, every single one of them. And if you leave your comments on future projects, future topics or just things you want to give us a shout well we all enjoy it so hope to see you soon and see you bye bye